Hey everyone and welcome back. Today we're diving deep into something that you use every single day, but probably don't think that much about encryption. Yeah. It's everywhere online. It's the invisible force that's protecting you when you do your banking online, right. when you're shopping, or even when you're just sending those uh, private messages that maybe you wish you could take back later. Yeah, that's a great point. I mean, encryption really is one of those things, isn't it? That it's yeah. just become so, so ingrained in our digital world, in our digital lives, that yeah. we just kind of take it for granted now. Right. It's always there. We don't even realize it's happening half the time. Yeah, it's kind of like the air we breathe. Yeah. You know, it's essential, but we don't really, we don't see it, right? So, right, absolutely. Yeah. So let's get right to it. What is encryption? So at its core, encryption is all about transforming information into a secret code. Okay. that only authorized parties can decipher. So you can kind of imagine it like writing a letter in a secret language that only your friend who has the decoding book can understand. Got it. That's essentially what encryption is doing in the digital world. So it's like taking readable information, turning it into a jumbled mess that unless you have the secret decoder ring, the key... The key, exactly. You can't unlock it. Yeah. But why is that so important? Well... Think about what happens when you buy something online. Okay. You enter your credit card details, and that information is traveling across the internet to the retailer, right? Right. Without encryption, that sensitive data would be vulnerable to anyone who might be snooping around on the network. Oh, so it's like a shield. Exactly. As our information is just zipping around through the digital world. That's a great way to put it. It's like a shield protecting your information. Mm -hmm. And it's not just online shopping. Yeah. It's your bank transactions. It's emails, your passwords, even online medical records. Wow. Anything you do online that involves sensitive information is relying on encryption to keep it safe from prying eyes. So it really is like a digital bodyguard for everything we're doing online. Absolutely. A digital bodyguard. That's that's amazing. But how does it actually work? Right. What's happening behind the scenes to make this magic happen? Well, the core of encryption lies in sophisticated mathematical algorithms and secret keys. Oh, yeah. These algorithms take your readable information and scramble it based on that specific key. Okay. And only someone with the correct key can reverse that process and decipher the information. So it's just like, it's like a combination lock for our data. Precisely. Only the right combination or the key yeah. can unlock it. It's a great analogy. And you know what? Those algorithms are incredibly complex. Okay. And it makes it practically impossible for anyone without the key to break that code. Okay, good. Yeah. But I have heard that there are different types of encryption. That's right. What's the difference between them? Yeah. So there are two main types, symmetric and asymmetric encryption. Okay. So in symmetric encryption, the sender and receiver use the same key to encrypt and decrypt the information. So kind of like if you and a friend were using one key to lock and unlock a shared box. Got it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. What about asymmetric? Have you heard that one? Asymmetric. Yeah. Yeah. Tell me about it. So asymmetric encryption is a bit more complex, but it's also more secure. And it actually involves two keys, a public key and a private key. Oh, okay. The public key can be given to anyone, right. but the private key must be kept secret. Hmm. So if I wanted to send you a super secret message, I would use your public key to lock it up. Yeah, to encrypt it. And then you would use your private key to unlock it. Exactly. And that ensures that only you with your private key can read that message, even if someone intercepts it along the way. Wow. That is so clever. It is. I never realized all this was going on behind the scenes yeah. to keep our online activities safe. It really is incredible, isn't it? It is. And you know what the exciting thing, or maybe a little bit scary, is that it's constantly evolving as technology advances. Yeah. So, you know, do the methods of encryption, right. ensuring that our data remains protected in this ever-changing digital landscape that we find ourselves in. This is fascinating stuff. We've covered a lot already just understanding what encryption is and why it's so important. But yeah. I'm sure our listeners are curious about how this actually plays out in their everyday lives. Right. Let's get down to the nitty gritty. Yeah. Let's look at some real world examples. Let's do it. Think about your smartphone, for instance. OK. When you connect to a Wi-Fi network, especially a public one, Encryption is working hard behind the scenes to protect your data as it travels between your phone and the internet. 
So even just connecting to Wi-Fi, even if it's at, you know, the coffee shop down the street, yeah. that's using encryption. Exactly. It's protecting your browsing activity, your emails, your social media, all those little digital breadcrumbs that we leave behind us. It's wild. It's pretty amazing, huh? What about messaging apps? Oh, yeah. Good point. You know, everybody uses them these days. Uh, is it? WhatsApp, Signal, all these yeah. things. You bet. Those apps like WhatsApp and Signal use what's called end-to-end -end encryption, meaning that only the people communicating okay. can read those messages. Mm -hmm. Not even the app company itself can snoop on your conversations. So it's like like you said before, a soundproof room. Yeah. Where only those two people can actually hear. Yeah, it really is. It's the gold standard for privacy and digital communication. That's amazing. This is seriously mind-blowing stuff. Yeah. It is. Who knew we were surrounded by so much encryption every single day? But mm. I got to imagine there are ways to break it, right? Well, of course, n nothing is completely foolproof, right? Yeah. Hackers are constantly trying to find ways to crack encryption. Right. But with strong algorithms and proper implementation, it's incredibly difficult to break. Okay. It's kind of like trying to solve a complex puzzle without all the pieces. Yeah. You just can't do it. So no system is perfect. Right. But strong encryption is the best we've got. It gives us a significant level of protection in the digital world. It's really the foundation of trust and security online. Yeah. And it allows us to shop, bank, communicate, and just live our digital lives with a certain level of confidence. This is deep stuff. Yeah. It, I feel like I've up. learned so much already. Good. I'm glad. It is really amazing like how much we rely on it now. It is. You know, we've talked about online shopping. We talked about these messaging apps. But yeah. yeah. There are so many other examples of encryption in action that you might not even might not even realize. Like what? Well, have you ever used a VPN? I've heard heard of them, but I'm not really sure. Yeah. I know what they do. So VPN stands for a virtual private network. Okay. And essentially what it does is it encrypts your internet connection. So right. it creates this secure tunnel for your data. Okay. It's like imagine traveling through a, a secret passageway. No one can see what you're doing. Oh, okay. Yeah. So if I'm on like public Wi-Fi yeah. at a coffee shop, yeah. a VPN would prevent someone from like snooping on my like browsing history yeah <laughs> stealing my password yeah. Yeah. exactly that's a great way to put it okay it adds that extra layer of protection especially yeah. when you're using networks that you don't really control gotcha okay yeah wow pretty cool right yeah encryption really is everywhere isn't it it is it's like the silent guardian we never knew we had yeah it's like this like a like a secret protector working in the background hmm and it's not just about, you know, protecting us from hackers and cyber criminals. Okay. Encryption also plays this vital role in ensuring what we call the integrity of our data. Okay. So yeah. what does integrity mean? So integrity means making sure that that data hasn't been tampered with or altered in any way as it's being transmitted from one place to another. Okay. You can kind of think of it like a tamper-proof seal on a product, right? Okay. So encryption can actually guarantee that the information you receive is exactly as it was sent. Oh, okay. Yeah. So it's not just about keeping information secret, but also like... It, that it's it's authentic, like a digital signature. Yeah. That it hasn't been messed with. A digital signature, exactly. Right, we, signature. That's a really good way to think about it, yeah. Okay, yeah. That's important. Yeah. For like financial transactions. Yeah. Legal documents, medical records. Absolutely. For all those things where you need to be certain that the information you're receiving is accurate. Right. Yeah. Encryption is vital. Yeah. But, but is there any way mm -hmm. to break it? Well, you know, while strong encryption is incredibly difficult to break. Right. There are a few, a few scenarios okay. where it could be vulnerable. Okay. So one method that hackers use is called a brute force attack. Okay. And that's where they essentially use powerful computers to try every possible key combination until they find the right one. So like just guessing. Basically, it's a lot of guessing. Yeah. And it, it takes, you know. A long time. A really long time with strong, lengthy keys. Yeah. It can take, you know, millions of years mm -hmm. to crack it. So, okay, good. But you know, however, as computing power advances, wow. that becomes less and less of a barrier. So. So the strength of encryption is like tied yeah. to the power of our computers. Absolutely. So it's like this constant arms race, right? Between between those who are trying to create strong encryption yeah. and those who are trying to break it. Right. So that's why these algorithms are constantly being updated and improved to stay ahead okay. of the curve. But even if the algorithms are strong, yeah. there are still weaknesses. 
Well, an, another potential weakness lies in the implementation okay. of the encryption. So how it's actually used. Exactly. So if yeah. it's not implemented properly, okay. there could be loopholes or vulnerabilities that okay. attackers could exploit. So it's not just about like having a strong lock. Right. It's also about like the door that that lock is on. That's a great way to put it. Yeah. Needs to be strong too. You need to have the whole system yeah. Yeah. secure. Yeah. Okay. So even with those vulnerabilities, it sounds like encryption is still like the best line of defense. Oh yeah. That we have. It's an essential tool yeah. for protecting our privacy, security, and trust online. Mm. You know, it allows us to go about our digital lives right. with confidence. This has been really interesting. I'm starting to see encryption everywhere now. Yeah. Like we talked about shopping online, messaging apps, even just connecting to Wi-Fi. It's everywhere, isn't it? Yeah, it really is. It's become so fundamental to the way our digital world works. And, and as we... As we continue to do more and more stuff online, I mean, yeah. the importance of encryption is just Absolutely. gonna keep going up. The more we rely on the internet, the more important encryption becomes. It's reassuring to know that uh, yeah. this technology is out there, like working behind the scenes yeah. to keep but. our information safe. Absolutely, yeah. But, but there's a but. There's a but. Yeah. Is there anything else we should know? Yeah, there's there's a big one that we haven't talked about yet, right. and that's encryption backdoors. Encryption backdoors, yeah. what are those? So a backdoor is essentially a way for authorized parties, like government agencies, okay. to bypass encryption and access the underlying information. Hmm. There's a way to kind of like get around those strong locks we were talking about. Kind of, yeah. And yeah. it's a very controversial topic, right? Yeah, now. I can imagine. Why yeah. Why would anyone want to weaken encryption? Well, the argument from, you know, law enforcement and yeah. intelligence agencies is that they need access to this encrypted data okay. to conduct criminal investigations, to prevent terrorist attacks, and to kind of maintain national security. Yeah, I mean, I can I can see yeah. how that would be helpful right. in those situations, but it yeah. just seems like it yeah. can be really easily abused. Absolutely, and that's exactly what security experts mm. are concerned about. You know, they argue that by creating these back doors, we're actually weakening encryption for everyone for and that, making yeah. it vulnerable yeah. to hackers and other malicious actors. So it's like it's like a trade-off. Yeah between it is it's a balancing act security and privacy it is it's a very complex issue with no easy answers right yeah. but it's a really important conversation that we need to be having yeah as we continue to kind of move through this digital world this deep dive has been uh it's been a real eye-opener good i'm glad we've learned so much about encryption yeah how it works yeah its importance in our lives yeah and, and some of the challenges that, absolutely yeah. that come it, along with it it's a really fascinating field isn't it yeah it, it is. just shows how technology is constantly evolving yeah and it's presenting these new opportunities right but also these new challenges and as we continue to move towards this right digital world yeah it's uh it's up to us yeah to kind of to stay on top of things. Absolutely. And stay informed. Yeah. And make sure we're making good decisions. You know, knowledge is power. Yeah. And understanding how encryption works, I think, really empowers all of us right. to make those informed decisions. About our security. Yeah. And privacy online. Yeah, exactly. Welcome back to the Deep Dive. We've been uncovering the mysteries of encryption, and now I'm really curious to hear more about what you mentioned before, the future of encryption. Yeah. It sounds like things are about to get even more interesting. Well, yeah, the future of encryption is, it's exciting, but it's also a little daunting. Okay. One of the biggest game changers on the horizon is the rise of quantum computing. Quantum computing? Yeah. That sounds like something straight out of a sci-fi movie. It does, it kind of does, but these quantum computers are becoming more and more powerful. Okay. And they pose a very, a significant challenge to the encryption methods we rely on today. Wait, so all this talk about strong encryption? Yeah. Unbreakable codes? That could all change with these quantum computers. That's the concern, yeah. Oh, okay. So quantum computers, they use the principles of quantum mechanics to perform calculations at speeds that are just yep. far beyond yeah. the capabilities of our classical computers. Okay. And this immense processing power could potentially allow them to crack encryption keys. Right. That would take traditional computers millions of years to break. 
So it's like having a super-powered code breaker. Right. That can just smash through our defenses. Yeah, pretty much. Okay, that's... Uh, yeah, it's a little alarming. A little alarming. But it's definitely something that the cybersecurity community is taking very, very seriously. Yeah. However, there's no need to panic just yet. Okay. Great. Researchers are already hard at work yeah. developing new encryption algorithms that are specifically designed to be resistant to these quantum attacks. So it's like a race against time. It is. To stay one step ahead. It's a constant arms race between yeah. between the code makers and the code breakers. Mm -hmm. That sounds yeah. intense. It is. It's uh it's cutting edge stuff, but it's yeah. it's it's the future of security, you know? So these new methods yeah. they're being developed. Yeah, so these new methods are called post quantum cryptography. Okay. And they're built on mathematical principles that are believed to be resistant okay. to even the most powerful quantum computers. So even with the arrival of these like well, supercomputers, yeah. our data can still be protected. Absolutely. You know, the field of cryptography is constantly evolving. It's right. always adapting to new challenges right. and ensuring that our information remains secure in this ever-changing technological landscape that we live in. This has been... Uh, yeah. A really fascinating deep dive. Way We've yeah. gone from understanding just the basics of encryption to now yeah. talking about the future of encryption. The quantum world. In a quantum world. Yeah, it's pretty wild, isn't it? It is. But it's I think it's important to remember that technology is never static. Right. It's always advancing, yeah. presenting these new opportunities, mm -hmm. but also new challenges. So it's up to us yeah. to kind of stay informed, to <laughs> stay ahead of the curve. You know, knowledge is power. And yeah. understanding how encryption works, I think, really does empower us right. to make informed decisions about our online security and privacy. Well said. Well, thank you for joining us for this deep dive into the world of encryption. It's been a pleasure. We hope you found it insightful and engaging. And Yeah, if you're interested in learning more about this fascinating topic, yeah. be sure to check out the resources that we've mentioned in the show notes. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit that bell for notifications so you don't miss out on future deep dives. Yes. Into the most intriguing and impactful topics of our time. Absolutely. Until next time, stay curious, stay informed, and stay secure.